I'm excited. Y'all give God glory as Angie comes and gives us the word in Jesus' name. I'm so used to preaching to my ladies, right? And then I look around, and I'm like, it's all my ladies. Yeah. Like, we totally overpower all the men. Look at them. That's beautiful. I don't think it has nothing to do with Women's Day. We're just wonderful. It's crazy because Meg really did <laughs> preach phenomenally this morning. And the crazy way the enemy works is that she's like, y'all are extraordinary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm sitting there like, how am I supposed to preach after Meg? Like, she is extraordinary. And then the Holy Spirit had to be like, but you are too. And I was like, thank you, Lord, because that was a good word. So I'm excited. I'm honored. I am blessed. I'm blessed to be under such wonderful pastors that would share the platform they've been given to pull gifts out of, I was going to say us ordinary people, but we are extraordinary people. <laughs> Um, so I am honored. I am blessed. Um, and you know, I like you always get that moment and they're, the preachers are up there and they're like, oh, I'm going to thank my wife. I'm going to thank my husband. Well, here is me and my little boo bear, Noah. So uh, let's give it up for my Noah bear. He's the best. He knows me and loves me. He knows all of me and he loves me. So I'm grateful. I'm very thankful. So I just want to talk to y'all today. Um, the Lord was beginning to give me a word for y'all, and he gave me something so simple, and I was like, Lord, I want something deep. I want, like, a revelatory thing. Like, I want to go out there and blow their minds. And he was like, no. So, <laughs> at least to me, right? And he told me I needed to wait. And I was like, all right, Lord, fine. I'm going to teach on waiting. Okay. And when I tell you the Lord has been making me wait for this word, it was like, I'm not going to send you up there to preach on something that I haven't made you do. And while I make you wait, I'm going to strip you of some things while you wait. So I pray that this word blesses you today and helps us in the waiting. So I just want to talk to you guys. I don't know if your kids are anything like my lovely Noah bear, but I'm sorry. I try not to call him that because I know he doesn't like it. I know he doesn't like it. All right, so you ever been in a situation where you are just in the middle of doing something, and you know, it doesn't even have to be your kids. It could be your coworkers. It could be somebody. They just need you. So I look at my life, and I could be in the middle of doing dishes, and here comes my wonderful Noah, and he's like, Mommy, can you come open this up for me? Now, both of my hands are wet. I'm doing dishes, and I'm like, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Get back to doing dishes. He knows obviously how to tell time in his spirit because he's like a minute later, mommy, mommy, I need you to come do this for me. And I'm like, wait a minute, I'll be there in a second. Like, wait a minute. Comes over and he's like, mommy, can you please open this? I've asked you so many times, I need you to do this. Like, come now. And I'm like, wait a minute, I am doing something. Right, we ever been there? Our coworkers like, can you come help this patient? Can you come up here and help? And I'm like, I am doing something. Can you wait a minute? And I dare to ask you a question that how many times have we been waiting and asking God, like, God, why haven't you done this? Why haven't you done this? Why aren't you showing up? And he's saying, wait a minute, I'm doing something. Wait a minute, I am preparing it for you. Wait a minute, I'm preparing them for you. I'm preparing the place for you. Wait a minute, I'm doing something. It doesn't look like I'm doing anything, but I'm doing something. I don't want to preach yet. So... <laughs> we're just going to go, I'm going to go real quick to a scripture, and then we're going to just ask the Lord to be here, um, to be here with us. So there is a book in the Bible called Lamentations, just so we know real quick. Uh, the Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. So Lord, I just ask you to continue to be here. Holy Spirit, give it to me like you, give it to them like you gave it to me, Lord. Give me the wisdom Give me the order to do it in, Lord. And I pray that you would just make yourself known to your people, Lord. As we go through the waiting processes, Lord, I pray that you would just magnify yourself, Lord, that we would walk out here with more wisdom, with a greater confidence, Lord, that when we're waiting on you, we're not waiting in vain. 
So I thank you, Father, that you are here and your name will be honored. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So I'm going to be quick. I have three points to give you. And the first one we're going to talk about is, one, that waiting sucks. Like, waiting is hard. You ever been, like, in a drive through and you are hungry? And for some reason, no one decided to show up to work at McDonald's that day, and everyone decided to come eat. And so there's like 10 cars and you are waiting. And if you're anything like my family, you're getting a call from your son like, where are you? I am hungry. 30 minutes later, we're still waiting. Waiting is hard. We can all agree on that. Waiting is hard, right? Waiting is impossible without the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, we could do all the waiting we want, but we're doing it in vain. Without the Holy Spirit, I don't know what I'm waiting for. Who am I waiting on? What am I waiting to do without the Holy Spirit? I'm going to prove it to you. So um, we learned, oh no, I'm going to back up. I don't want to go there. I'm going to tell you a funny story. (laughs) Okay. So when I was younger, I was like my son. And I would go to my mom and I would be like, Ma, can you hurry up? We need to leave. And, you know, we're Puerto Rican. So she was always late. It was just what it was. And I would be like, Ma, we need to go. Like, my friends are waiting at the mall for me. We need to go. And she would be like, Angie, patience is a virtue. And I would be like, okay and I'd be like 10 minutes later like mom my friends are at the mall for me they're gonna leave if I don't come there and she's like Angie patience is a virtue and I'm like your mom is a virtue and I'm like ready to leave right come back and I'm like mom we need to go and she would say it again and for some reason I hated it like you know 10 year old me didn't know that she was trying to prophesy and speak scripture to me I was just like stop saying that it's not a virtue we need to leave Turns out it is a virtue. Turns out. So we know that. You don't have to go there. In Galatians 5.22, it says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. So I read that and I say, if the Holy Spirit produces patience, then I can't do it without the Holy Spirit. I can't do it appropriately without the Holy Spirit. I could say I'm waiting, but unless the Holy Spirit is leading me, there's a good chance that I'm waiting in vain. So one, I'm going to prophesy that by the end of this sermon, if you do not have the Holy Spirit, if you are not sure that the Holy Spirit resides in you, you are going to receive it today because the Lord wants you to wait on him and not in vain. He wants you to know when to go left and when to go right. He wants you to know when to leave, when to go. He wants you to know when to move and when to stay still. That's what he wants for us. It's only up to us if we want him back. All right, so waiting without the Holy Spirit is in vain. So I am be quick. The second point is here. It matters who you wait with. It matters who you wait with. It matters. I'll tell you a funny story here. Okay. So a couple years ago, it was my birthday. I was trying to be cute. Had like cute little dress on. I found this hot air balloon thing that me and my boyfriend were going to go do. It was like, yes, we're going to go do this. We drive an hour out. We're going to go to this hot air balloon thing. We get there. It's a huge event. I laugh because some of you might know this. We get there. It's a huge event. A lot of people, yes, we're going to wait in line. There's like five hot air balloons, right? You get to pick which one. There's like a character, whatever. You get to pick the line you want to stand in. We get in the line. We're like waiting. An hour goes by, and we've like done this, and we're waiting. (laughs) And like to the right, one of the hot air balloons starts to deflate while people are in it. And we're like, hmm, that sucks for them. We move in an hour. An hour later, the next one starts to deflate with people. And you would think we'd be like, it's probably time to go. No, we were like, we picked the right line. Let's wait another hour. We're waiting. It's dark now. It's hot. We are hungry. It is hot. And I'm like, babe, we just need to go. Like, I'm tired. And he's like, no, no, no. Like, you'd probably be mad if we left. Like, let's just wait it out. 40 minutes later, we're waiting. Now, they tell us that the fire is running low on the hot air balloons. Because at this point, this is the only hot air balloon still up. All the rest have already deflated and they're done. To get to the line, and we're ready to go, and there's no doors. I don't know if you've ever been in a hot air balloon. There's no doors. you got to jump in, and you got to jump out. And I was being cute, so I had a pencil dress on like this, where you got to walk like your legs. 
So I'm jumping in, we're jumping in, and because they're trying to like save the little gas that's left, because we all bought tickets to go on there, we jump in, they take us up for 20 seconds and bring us back down. And we have waited four hours for this. It matters who you wait with, right? So we get to the car, we go to leave, and we're like hurting, because now we have to jump out of the thing as well. And we're not like 15, you know? So we're hurting, we're getting to the car, we're hungry, all of it. And we get to the car and I'm just like, oh my God, that was the worst. And he was like, you know, and I kind of hope he's not watching, so you don't hear me. He was trying to be a cornball on purpose. And so he was like, you know, it's okay. I wouldn't have wanted to wait with anyone else but you. And I was like, that was so cute. Oh my gosh. But it matters who you wait with, right? Because these girls love me, had I been waiting with Charlene, we would have left after 10 minutes. I would have missed out on the whole opportunity of getting in a hot air balloon. It matters who you wait with, right? Because I realized that depending on who you wait with, you might leave too early. You might miss what is actually meant for you, and I'm going to prove it to you. So we're going to go to scripture. This I do want you to go to. We're going to go to Matthew 26 and 36. Matthew 26 and 36. Matthew 26, 36. Are you ready? All right, 36 says, Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful, and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, my father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he turned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour, he asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, my father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come and the son of man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes our betrayer. Now, when you read that, it says that Jesus and his friends went out and Jesus said to his friends, disciples, and he said, I am full of sorrow to the point of death. I'm going to go pray. Can you sit here and cover me? Can you sit here and have my back? And he went to pray, and he came back, and the people that were waiting with him had fallen asleep. And he says, again, you're sleeping? I need you to cover me. I am here in a point of death. Like, how many times have we been where we lost a loved one? And I know for me, there's been times where I've you know, we all know Shanae's my best friend, right? I call on Shanae and she comes check on me. And Shanae, I don't have the words to say. I can't even pray right now if I'm being honest. I don't know if I prayed in the last two days because I can't do it right now. And the grace of God where she's like, don't worry about it, sis. We're lifting you up. That's what Jesus was asking of them. I need you to cover me right now. It matters who you wait with. Because if you wait with the wrong ones, they're not going to be able to bring you to the feet of Jesus. They're not going to be able to bring what you're troubled with and leave it there and continually intercede for you. And, and as I study this, I see, I see like a courtroom. And you know how the lawyers, they come and they have, like Meg kind of said this morning, they have all of their files and their folders and they're like ready to bring all the accusations up against you. They're ready to do it. But when we have the Holy Spirit and we have people around us who are willing to wait with us when we are at our worst, that's the Holy Spirit on this side going to the court and the judge and saying, oh, no, 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 but I'm here to intercede. Please, 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 Lord, save them. Please don't let them die in this, Lord. I'm going to keep bringing this to your attention. I'm going to keep bringing it to you, Lord. They need a miracle, Lord. Their son is dying. I need you to save them. That's who you got to wait with. We can't be waiting with people who are falling asleep. 
Now I'm going to bring this back. You don't know if who you're waiting with is falling asleep without the Holy Spirit. Because you don't know what you don't know. And we don't know what we don't know. The Bible says we have to thank the Lord for the things unseen that he's saving us from. We don't know what the enemy's out there doing. I know he's out steal, kill, and destroy. But if out the Holy Spirit, I don't know who he's after in this moment. I don't know who to cover. It matters who you wait with. All right. So I'm going to tell you a story. I'm not, we're not going to go there in the Bible. But um, I wanted to preach on Esther because I'm like, yes, it's Women's Day, Esther. No. So I'm going to tell you the story of her. And then we're going to actually talk about King Xerxes in Esther. So Esther is a very short book. It tells a story of a king and starts out that he went for over a half a year and was displaying his wealth. And I laugh because it says that he displays his linen of wealth. And I'm like, what sheets are you going to put on your bed that would prove you're rich? What? That's crazy. So it says that he's showing his gold and all of this stuff. And right towards the end of it, he wants to have a banquet. And now him and his friends, it says that wine was not a problem. They were, have more wine. It's on me. Like, let's have fun. Let's get drunk. All of this. So they're waiting because this went on for seven days. So he's waiting with these guys. They're hanging out. They're doing all of it. On the seventh day, it says that he calls for his queen, Queen Vashti. And he tells the servants and he says, go get her because I want to show her off. I want to show how, beauty, how beautiful she is, how wonderful she is. Like, look at me. And the servants go, and they come back, and they're like, bro, she said she ain't coming. <laughs> She's tired. She's sick of you. You're all drunk. She's not coming. So he's been waiting with his friends for this queen to come out. And they're like, what? And he's like, what should I do? I've been waiting with you for this late. What should I do? And they're like, I got you exile her she's done she's not the queen anymore get her out and he's like yeah that's a good idea that's a great idea we should do that she's done right and then he's like but I got more you know what you need to do you need to go out and put a law in effect that says whenever a man summons a woman she needs to come because if you don't do that these women are going to be out here acting ratchet and think that they could talk to their men any kind of way and we're not about that that's what his friends told him to do when they were waiting for her. And then you keep reading, and the queen's gone. It happened. He did it. He made the law. He followed everything. And then when he was done being drunk and full of rage, he realized what he did. Right? So now he has to go find a whole, a whole other queen, has to wait through a whole process in the beautiful story of Esther. Um, but he could have had his queen. There was a reason she was his queen, but he was waiting with the wrong people. Because when you wait with the wrong people, they'll have you divorcing that marriage right before God was about to do it. When you wait with the wrong people, they'll have you abandoning your child when your child needs you. They're grown. They don't need you. They're 18. They'll figure it out. That's not what God intended. I don't stop being his mother when he's 18. I was created to be his mother on this earth. But when you wait with the wrong people, they'll have you letting go of the business right when God was about to open the door for it. It matters who you wait with. Matters who you wait with. So we're going to go to point three. And this is where I want you to really grasp. And the Lord says we need to change our perspective on what we're waiting for. We need to change our perspective on what we're waiting for. And I'm going to read a passage to you. I don't want you to go there because I'm going to read it in the message translation, and we typically don't carry around that Bible. So, but you can write it down. I'm going to Romans 8, Romans 8, 22, and 25. Romans 8, 22, 25. All around us, we observe a pregnant creation. The difficult times of pain throughout the world are simply birth pangs. But it's not only around us, it's within us. The spirit of God is arousing us within. We're, all, we're also feeling the birth pains. These sterile and barren bodies of ours are yearning for full deliverance. This is why waiting does not diminish us any more than waiting diminishes a pregnant mother. We are enlarged in the waiting. We, of course, don't see what is enlarging us, but the longer we wait, the larger we become and the more joyful our expectancy. 
Meanwhile, the moment we get tired in the waiting, God's spirit is right alongside helping us along. If we don't know how or what to pray, it doesn't matter. He does our praying in and for us, making prayers out of our wordless sighs and our aching groans. He knows us far better than we know ourselves, knows our pregnant condition, and keeps us present before God. That's why we can be sure that every detail in our lives of love for God is worked into something good. And so that tells me we need to change our perspective. We were created to wait. We were created to wait on our creator. We were never created to wait on a husband. We were never created to wait on a career. We were never created to wait on a bigger house. We were created to wait on the return of our creator. It's what we do in the waiting while we're waiting for the return of our creator that matters. We're waiting for full salvation from the creator. We're waiting for redemption from the creator. I can't wait on a husband for full redemption. That just sounds silly. That sounds silly. I can't wait on a new building for this church for redemption. That's silly. That's the nice way of saying, you're crazy. You're losing it. We were created to wait. So it says, um, let me read this here. So as we're waiting, as we're waiting, I'm thankful. Lord, I'm thankful that as I'm waiting on the creator to meet with his creation, I'm so grateful that you sent a spouse along the way to wait with me, but I wasn't waiting on that. Lord, I'm so grateful that you sent me the skills and ability to maintain this career so that I have financial blessing and now my spouse and I don't have to worry about that, but I was never waiting on that. I'm grateful that as I was waiting, you helped me to bear children and now we have a legacy, but I was never waiting on that. We've got to change our perspective on what we're waiting on. When we change our perspective on what we're waiting on, for some reason, the stress and worry seems to go away. I'm not stressed about what's going to come. I'm not stressed about what might not come. I'm not stressed that if we need a building in January and on December 14th, we still don't have it. I'm not stressed about it. Because if we're waiting on the creator to come to full term with his creation, then what does that matter? If that's what we're supposed to have and I'm waiting on the Lord, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. He's done it time and time again. We were created to wait on our creator. We were created to wait on our creator. I want that to sit with you so heavy because we're talking about a creator of the heavens and the earth. He didn't do it all in one day. He waited. He waited. On day one, he did something. On two, day two, he did something. On day three, do you, you mean to tell me he wasn't capable of doing it all in one day? No, he waited. So why would we not have to wait? Why would he not have to, we not have to wait? But we're not waiting on things of this world. We're not waiting on things of this world. If you never get a husband, you have a father. Sis, I want you to have everything that you want. And I'm, I'm just saying to you because you my mind, right? I want you to have everything that you want. But if you have Jesus and Holy Spirit, why do you need anything else? Why do you need anything else? Like Desiree was saying in the first service, it's the only thing that will satisfy us. This is what we were created for. The Bible says Jesus is coming back for his people. Why would he do that if he didn't have people that were created to wait for him to do that? I don't want to leave this earth and realize that I was waiting on everything else. I was waiting for him to propose. I was waiting for my, my, my employer to realize that I had worth. I was waiting for my mother to finally love me the way that she should love me. What does that matter? Because Jesus says, when I died on the cross, I loved you. When I died on the cross, I saw the value in you that your boss has yet to see in you. When I died on the cross, I did everything that you could ever need. Why are you waiting on anything else? Everything that you need, I already did. I did it for you. In fact, I went into the secret place with the Lord to wait on your behalf. I was waiting for you. I'm still waiting for you. And because he's such a gracious and merciful God, he's waiting for everyone to come back to him because we sing songs like this morning 
And as we were singing, I was like, man, these are, if people really knew what they were singing, like, you'd be afraid to sing it. You'd have hesitation like I do sometimes. Like, you'd have hesitation because you're basically asking God to strip you of you, take everything that I've made matter to me in this world, and give me more of you. And then when you're sitting in a service and God says, I want that back, and you're like, okay, if you really mean it, say it again. Like, and then he's like, until I ask you to give me back the relationship that you prayed for for years. Until I ask you to give me back the son that I said was your promise. Until I ask you to give me back the career that you're so great that you make hundreds of thousand dollars a year, but I'm asking you to give it back. Now, what are we waiting on? In those moments, now I'm like, oh, Jesus, I'm waiting on you because you done took everything away. But what if we're not in a hard place and he's asking us to give us something back? I'm not struggling. My household is taken care of. My family is in sound mind. I'm not struggling. I don't need to be broken at the feet of Jesus based off of my circumstances. What do I do now? You got to wait. You got to wait. You got to wait. And the biggest thing is our perspective. Our perspective. We think that we're waiting on things of this world. How many of y'all were waiting for a church like this? Okay, now let me ask you. What did you do? You went to the Lord. You didn't sit outside of the door and say, I'm waiting for this to be light seekers. I'm waiting for the door to open. You had no idea. You had no idea. You didn't come and there wasn't a group of us like sitting crisscross, say, hey, are you waiting? I'm waiting too. What do you want to do while we wait? Oh, we could just sit here and wait. No, we went to the Lord. Why aren't we always like that? Why aren't we constantly like, I don't care if any of this happens. I don't care if I have any more kids. I want them. I don't care if I have any more because I'm waiting on you, Lord. And if you don't want that, then I don't want it. Because when I do it on my own, I do it on my own. Somehow I end up back on my face. Somehow I end up back on my face. So I want to just, I tell you, I'm going to be out of here quick. And and the crazy part is, too, when we do, like, our rubies, I'm always like, yeah, girls, we're going to be out of here quick. And then, like, hours later, we're still there. But this time I meant it. And I even was like, Lord, give me some more. And he was like, no, this is it. If you want it to be done my way, this is it. And I said, okay, Lord, this is it. So... The three things I want you to get out of today, and then y'all are going to go home and be blessed in your homes, is one, waiting isn't always eating easy. Waiting is hard, but without the Holy Spirit, it's impossible. It is impossible. You will not see that he is tall, dark, and handsome, but he's really a devil without the Holy Spirit. You won't see it. You won't see it. You won't know that when you get the bad report from school and they're like, he did it again, 10 days in a row, that it's really a demonic attack against your household without the Holy Spirit. You won't know that your husband is actually struggling with something at work unless you have the Holy Spirit because he's not sharing it to tell you this is what you need to cover him with. Without the Holy Spirit, waiting is impossible. Like it's not just hard, it's impossible. It's impossible. I'm not going to wait. I'm going to do it on my own. It's impossible. Number two, it matters who you wait with. Matters who you wait with. Now, I'm going to bring this a step further. Some people really, really want to wait with you. Some people are like, can I please be your friend? I really want to wait with you. Please, I want, I I just, I really want to wait with you. Like, and they might not say it like that, but they're like, hey, can I come to your house and hang out with you? Hey, do you want to go walking tomorrow? Like, they really just want to be your friend. And it's a devil dressed up, trying to infiltrate what you got. And without the Holy Spirit, you have no idea. You just let this devil run into your house, wreak havoc. Now your husband is all pissed off at you. Now your children are running a hot mess. You don't have any time to do anything because you're tormented. 
So not only does it matter who you wait with, you need Holy Spirit to discern why people are wanting to wait with you when they were not sent by the Lord. And then the last part is changing our perspective. It's changing our perspective. When we realize that we were created to wait on the creator, and when we realize that we're not citizens of this world, we just reside here. We're just hanging out here until the day he calls us back into glory. We're waiting to be seated next to our heavenly father. Like when she says we're in the throne room, what will that day be like when we're actually in a throne room? Like we're not in the light seekers building in the spirit. We know we're there, but what will it be like when we are in spirit with our father? What will that be like? That's what I'm waiting for. That to me is worth waiting for more than anything else. Like I will never wait in another hour, four hour line for hot air balloon. Never ever in my life. (laughs) But I will wait four hours in the presence of God. That's more satisfying. That's more fulfilling. That's where our perspective needs to be. We're not waiting for our children to get it together. We're waiting on the Lord to do it. So we're gonna wait on him. That's what we're doing. We're not waiting on our husband to get his act together. We're not waiting on our wife to be a better cook. We're not waiting on those things. (laughs) We are waiting on the Lord. And it sounds so simple. It sounds so simple. And yet we all struggle with it. We all struggle with waiting. Waiting is hard. But without the Holy Spirit, it's impossible. So that's all I have for you. I'm going to keep it brief. That is all I have for you. But I want you to know that waiting is not in vain without Holy Spirit. That is it. 